back to the channel. So over the last couple of days, I've got the trailer repaired. I went to pick it up this morning. So that's obviously what we need to cut the muck. But I'll show you the job which has been done. So um, you see what I mean. So unfortunately, the ram did go, but it's now been repaired thanks to Haywards and Beckles. So that's the seal. Uh, all the new seals been put on. That uh, lead down there was broken as well. So they put a new lead on that thanks to Haywards. So now we're all good to go. Trailer works, I suppose. At some point, maybe the other one will go, but we only had the one ram done, so we'll have to see, see how it goes. But yeah, other than that, it's all repaired, fixed, which is what I wanted. So, you know, that is the thing, unfortunately. Sometimes, you know, the older kit does go wrong. Sometimes you do get breakdowns and things like that. So just drop it down and then we'll be able to cart the muck out of the yard and finish mucking out the yard, which is what I was nearly finished doing before the trailer broke. Okay, so now we can start mucking out the shed. Get this job finished, so. At the moment, I know a lot of people are uh, very skeptical at the moment, especially at the Norfolk show very skeptical to uh, invest in new machinery there's a lot of talk about that at the Norfolk show um, no one's got any money at the moment no one's investing so we'll see what happens in the next uh, next couple of years I suppose it all hinges really on this next election and it's very rare I get political on the channel um, but I do think I've got to put my postal vote in later on I do think that it's already been decided in a way. Uh, a lot of people are saying it'll be Labour who get in. And look, I don't, I don't mind who gets in, as long as it's, as long as they're a fair party for farmers. That's all I'm bothered about, really, as a farmer. And I think, as long as the current, the next party looks after farmers to some extent, keeps the subsidies going, and looks after food production, I think a lot of farmers will be fairly over the moon with that. That being said. Um, when I was growing up, an old farmer did tell me once, farming does very well um, with a Labour government in a recession. So I suppose we'll find out in the next couple of weeks. July the 4th, I think it is, the election day, day before my birthday actually. Uh, Wesley Pandy and I, one lonely farmer, share the same birthday actually, uh, who I saw at Llama, yeah, July the 5th. So we both got the, uh, the same day of our birthday, but very soon we'll find out and of course, it's going to be interesting to see whether the new government will help farmers or whether they'll go against farmers. It's going to be interesting either way, I think, to see what happens, certainly over the next few weeks. But anyway, we've got to get the rest of this muck out. A few loads without taking the shed down. <laughs> and uh, then we'll be hunky-dory. But yeah, got some bathing to do this week. Although it has been raining, it's a great thing about side it just you don't really have to worry too much if it rains but everything will get wrapped so I mean don't get me wrong you know everything's gone up silage wrap's gone up uh, baler price has gone up net wrap even the oil I have to use in the baler's gone up it has a chainsaw oil which goes on the side like a chain oil that's doubled in price over the last couple of years uh, grease I go for a hell of a lot of grease now and you need it to maintain all the parts but that's gone up and um, so a lot of the input costs have gone up really for the farm and that's all right, you know, as long as you get it on the other end. And I have said to some producers, you know, some supermarkets, when we sell beef from the farm or crops, you know, it's going to be this price. And if you guys don't want to pay that price, we can't sell it. You know, simple as, you know, at the end of the day, everyone's trying to make a living. You know, don't get me wrong, you know, you never make a fortune out of farming, but as long as you can pay the bills, you know, change the tractor every four or five years or something like that, invest in some new sheds and buildings, all as well you know but that being said you know at the Norfolk show the other day looking at the price of some of the stuff everything has gone up uh, whether it's Fent, John Deere, New Holland, Casey you know, everything is ex it's expensive especially the fence but I I really like the fence tractors but uh, my god you gotta have some deep pockets for a fence so that one there I really like that one but as I said at the show I think we'd change it for a 6R185 and the manager would be 741. To be fair, you know, the new versions of both these machines, we know, we'll know because they're the same platform. And, you know, I suppose the other thing is you stick to what you know, don't you? 
don't get me wrong, you know, for years we were JCB, and I know a lot of people in the comments like that particular tally handle brand. And I just felt, you know, when we had, when we ran them, the build quality's gone down a little bit over the years, I think. You know, they're, they're producing a hell of a lot of tally handlers. And I think the problem is it's difficult to maintain quality control on JCB. So, yeah, they're a good tally handler, don't get me wrong, but I think longevity-wise, you're probably better off with something a little bit stronger, a little bit better built, like either at Manitou or, as I was looking at, at Ben Burgess down the Kramers, um, which a lot of people are, are trading in, actually, now. I heard 25 JCBs have been traded in for Kramers, so that obviously... That obviously tells you something. Um, a lot of people say about New Holland, but uh, although I've driven a few New Hollands, I could just never get that excited about them, um, you know, to actually invest in one yet. But I suppose it depends what you've been brought up on. You know, we do get on really well with John Deere. And, you know, John Deere, I, okay, they're not number one anymore. I suppose Fent is, you know, if you really get into it, Fent is probably the better tractor. Um, a lot of farmers are trading their John Deeres in for Fents now, so I get it. You know, if you want to buy a Fent, and, and, you know, you can... It's all about getting the maximum efficiency out of a tractor nowadays, and, and the Fent will give you that because it's got, you know, Vario, Grip, TMS, all the rest of it, you know, the latest and greatest transmissions, engines, all the rest of it. And, you know, they, the new ones run on really low RPM to save fuel, you know, and whereas, you know, John Deere's not doing that yet. John Deere does seem to be quite behind, actually, at the moment, and I'm sure in the next few years, John Deere will try and bring something out to match Fent, but Fent is just, knocking the ball out of the park at the moment but of course you've got to you got to pay for it because uh, you know some of those nice tractors you saw even the small fence you know 620 quarter of a million pound retail so i don't know what the on-farm price would be it's a bit like you know 728 but um, don't get me wrong you know some lovely tractors but uh, yeah we'll start cutting this out and uh, push the muck pile up later on in the day all right well we've got the uh 6r going so we're going up to the muck pile now and um I've just on the phone to someone, we've got some bales to go and do some straw bales at harvest, which will be uh, exciting. So, unfortunately, the wheat is a little bit behind, so is the barley. Looking like things will have to be sprayed off this year because the weather has just been so bad. Although we had a bit of sun over the last few weeks, especially like the Norfolk show, we just haven't had enough really yet for the crops to turn. So I think there's going to be a lot of glyphosate out this year. And speaking to everyone at the moment who I know, a lot of the agronomists, they've all gone on holiday. Everyone's on holiday. Ibiza, Greece, Spain. And uh, unfortunately, I can't go on holiday because there's too much silage to be made. So I haven't even started on the Haddisco silage, the marsh silage yet. So it's going to be a good long while, realistically, before I can start looking at a holiday. But um, see that barley over there is turning. But winter barley will turn before, obviously, spring. So nice to have this trailer repaired I will say really really nice to have it back up and running I need to go cultivating as well this week I've got a small spinner which I'll just show you in the yard which is going to go on one of the small tractors to plant grass seed it was sort of a an idea of mine an experiment to see if it's going to work and you could probably broadcast on things like stubble turnips um, sort of grasses and clover lays and things like that for the new SFI incentive so I'm going to see if it works I did actually come up and push the muck pile up on Sunday over the weekend and so it has been pushed up this muck pile. See there's the barley. It is actually turning but it's slow. It is slow this year so like I say might have to get some glyphosate out. Call up the spray company. They got the big uh, Agrifax sprayers. Now a lot of people like these new Bailey trailers, Richard Weston trailers. I know it's been a bit of a faff getting the ram repaired, but I do really like this trailer for this reason, as you will see, it's repaired. For now, anyway. <laughs> yeah, if you get that right up on the back of the muck pile, look, we can put a heap on top of a heap. This is why I love these dump trailers. Richard Weston used to make them as well. I did see a nearly new one built a couple of years ago, so I think Richard Weston have been making them recently, but this is the little secret with these dump trailers. Muck pile on top of a muck pile. This is going to be ready. I've got the electric fence post there. This is going to be ready to harvest at Christmas. Now, because we've had so much rain, it's looking good. It has really greened up 
over the last couple of weeks and we've got some eruption as well if you look down here of the bulb so there is our little fodder beaks which will be feeding the cattle later on in the year so it's actually although we've had a lot of rain this year and it has been a nightmare for the grass it's been very good for this stuff because normally this time of the year this droughts off so of course with every year it's good and bad you know you get a lot of rain sometimes it's drought and crops die off normally when something's doing badly on the farm another thing's doing well and this year it's just turned out that the fodder beak so far has been doing quite well so i just need the rain just hold off a little bit for that barley to just start turning which will be literally in the next couple of weeks it will start turning so i mean the thing is then it goes to harvest and you know you don't want it to be turning and you know you don't want it to be raining all the time at harvest because that needs to come in because we don't have any grain drying facilities it needs to come in at 14 percent moisture that barley so as long as it's dry in july august time which i don't think it will be because like i say everyone's gone on holiday everyone's leaving because the weather's not been good and um, we've got too much rain but it will be i think it'll be an intermittent harvest it'll be you've got to get in to, to cut it when you can the amount of phone calls i've had this year for everyone wanting me to come and bale their wet hay has been unbelievable chuck it on the wrapper and then you can open it obviously in winter time so yeah we'll go back to the yard and i'll show you that spinner as well later on that little spinner i've got but yeah well, this will be spread in uh, next year so take that with me that bloody old post all right so we've been cutting some muck out today so i've got the trailer back up and running now this is my small experiment it's a fertilizer spreader slash cedar um, it's actually made in italy but they're sold on behalf of um, fleming now what it's for is basically i'm going to use it on the back of either the 135 or the 65 fill it with grass seed and use it for pollen and bird nectar mixes um bird bumblebee mixes things like that and also grass seed as well um, but what it is, is it's got a spinning deck on the bottom. I've got to finish taking off the plastic. And basically that will then spin. You can set it on the front here and then you can adjust how much seed you let out. I do have a booklet as well, which can work out kilograms per hectare as well. So which is quite important, especially for the grass seed. So I've got some Italian ryegrass to put in at the bottom of the fodder beet field, which is now going in in the autumn for next year's silage. So it's an experiment really to see whether or not this works. And I do have to say, since the recent episode of Clarkson's Farm, everyone wants to be a farmer now. Uh, I've got everyone ringing me up, people from towns, cities, friends from school. Uh, everyone wants to be a farmer. So this sort of thing is, I call it, you know, it's micro farming. And really that's what people will be getting into, uh, being inspired from Clarkson's Farm is micro farming. So not, you know, farming with huge tractors, massive equipment. You know, you can just use the 135, um, you know, small compact tractor, things like that micro farming is the future if you want to get into it and you know at the end of the day farming is a great way of life you know we've got chickens here we've got calves we've got cattle sheep and um, everything we normally have a few pigs as well which go in the freezer at the end of the year so you know there's all sorts going on and you know farming is a way of life you know it's not you can't do it for the money you've got to enjoy it i've been in farming all of my life and i really do enjoy farming as you can probably tell from the videos and all the content so this is an experiment i'll let you know how it goes in the next couple of weeks i could even put a bit of fertilizer through it but I have been offered a few bags, 20 kilo bags from my, my experiment with, with some grass and stuff, but it's really for the seed, it's for grass seed. So yeah, with that, keep liking and subscribing. I've got to go and buy a new battery this afternoon for one of the tractors. So there's always something going wrong and um, you know, there's always bills on the farm to pay. So it is what it is, but yeah, looking forward to the election results as well in the next couple of days and seeing if the new prime minister, the new party looks after farmers. Yeah, keep liking and subscribing and I'll catch you on the next one. This is Angus, baby calf, which we're looking after at the moment. He's an orphan, so um, used to buy calves in growing up. We can't buy any in at the moment because there's been a TB outbreak in Norfolk, unfortunately. But mini Angus here, he's coming on well. Pip comes with us morning and night as well, doesn't she? Didn't you, Pip? She does uh, sheep, cattle, and everything now. She's really coming along well, aren't you, girl? But she does get a little bit obsessed sometimes. Yeah, she's um, she's a good companion, don't get me wrong, so yeah. Click here to subscribe to the channel. And click here to watch another Ollie's Farm video.